L I F T S O N G K I D S. What's up, kids? Is that you? Hey, everyone. How are you doing? We are moving into week 11 of Life Song Kids Online. And today, we're getting ready to start with our final story of our series, Story Time. I hope you guys have been having as much fun as I have going through these big stories in the Bible. And today, we're starting the life of Moses. That's right, now we're going to be going through his life over the next couple of weeks. So go ahead and buckle up, strap on your seatbelt, and let's get started. How many of you guys love babies? Maybe you have a baby brother or sister at home. Maybe you like to take care of your baby dolls or stuffed animals. Well, you guys are in luck because today we're talking about a very special baby, baby Moses. That's right, Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God knew Moses as a baby. God knew you as a baby. He calls you from a young age, and he's just as important as a teensy weensy little boy as he will be in the years to come. But I don't want to spoil too much for you, so let's go ahead and read the story for ourselves. Many years passed. A new pharaoh ruled over Egypt. He did not know about the good things Joseph had done. By now, there were many people in Jacob's family. They were called Israelites. In our last story, we talked about a man named Jacob who had a son named Joseph. Now Joseph had kids and his kids had kids and these people made up the Israelites. Pharaoh did not like the Israelites. He made them work hard. Now that does not seem very fair, does it? Has anybody ever been mean to you or treated you unfairly? One day, Pharaoh decided to get rid of all the Israelite baby boys. No, we can't get rid of all the baby boys. A woman named Jacobed had a baby boy. She wanted to save him. Sweet child, I can't just throw you in the river like all the other Israelite mothers. I must do what I can to protect you, but what? So, she gently laid her baby inside a basket and placed him in the river. The baby started to cry. Alas, I will put my child in this basket to float down the river, and I pray, O oh God, that you will keep my baby safe. Okay, Mom, I'm gonna go undercover so that I can find out what happens to our baby brother. I will let you down, Mom. Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket and opened it. She gently picked up the baby and hugged him. I want to keep you, the princess whispered. She named him Moses because she pulled him out of the water. Now Jacobet served the Lord and she could not bring herself to kill her baby. So she puts him in the river, but that's still scary because he could still easily end up dead. But instead, Pharaoh's daughter finds him. What is it we have here? Oh, that couldn't be a baby now, could it, in that basket? I bet it's one of those babies my father tried to kill. Well, you know what? I will do everything in my power to give that baby a beautiful life, but what do I know about raising a child? Oh, if only I could find somebody that knew how to take care of a baby. Miriam, the baby's big sister, had been watching nearby. She said to the princess, I know a woman who can help you take care of the baby. So Miriam ran to get her mother. Jacobet was so happy. Hey, I might, I might know somebody who could take care of that baby. She's a really amazing woman, and I really think she could do just such a good job. If you take care of this baby for me, I promise to bring him back to the palace and treat him like family. He will never be in any harm. Oh God, you brought my baby back to me. Thank you. When Moses was a young boy, Jacobet returned him to the princess. He grew up in the palace. Now Moses' sister is watching, and now not only is Moses still alive, but Pharaoh's sister asks Moses' mom to take care of him, and she pays her to do it. So God really took what was a bad situation and turned it into a blessing. 
And as Moses grows up, he actually grows up inside the palace where he's provided for and taken care of by the very man who tried to kill him. This is gonna lead us right into our main point. So let's head back into the classroom to find out. All right, kids, our main point for the day is going to be God will protect his people. One more time, God will protect his people. And guess what? That includes you because you are one of God's children. So he is going to protect you and he is going to take care of you just like he did for Moses. Now Moses' mom could have easily been scared for what was going to come. But she trusted God that he would take care of the baby because she believed he was called for big things. And God did. How many of you have ever been scared before? I'm too scared to go to sleep when all the lights go off because I think there might be monsters under my bed. Well, here's the good news. When you're scared, just remember that God will protect his people. When you get scared in the dark at night, or you get sick and you don't feel really good, God will protect his people. Our memory verse for today is going to come out of Deuteronomy 31.6. And it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. That is a good promise. God calls us to be strong and courageous. He says, do not be afraid or terrified of them because the Lord your God is with you and he's never going to leave you. And when the Lord God is on your side, nobody can harm you. Well, that's the lesson for today. How does it feel to know that you have an all-powerful God on your side who makes you strong and courageous? Let's go ahead and say that main point one more time. God will protect his people. You better take that word and hide it in your heart. But I think that is something that is worth Celebrating! So let's go ahead and have a parade. Next week.